Hey guys, Checklist here with another F4 Wizzo tutorial video. This time we're going to be looking at radar functions and controls, as well as how to interpret the radar returns on the screen. I will not be going into each function and control, as I prefer to teach the most used functions that will get you up in the air and engaging bandits quickly. If you want to know more about functions that I do not cover, please reference the Heat Blur online manual starting in section 3.11.1. The basic bindings that you will need to get started are antenna hand control slew x and y axes, antenna hand control trigger half action and full action, antenna elevation up and down, and antenna hand control challenge button. In the previous video we went over the radar power control knob functions as part of our startup process, so we will be leaving it in operate for the duration of this video. The radar mode switch has six positions. Boresight mode puts the radar into boresight. In boresight, the antenna is fixed directly forward, with radar returns displayed normally on the screen. Contacts can be locked normally with half action and full action. Radar mode puts the radar into automatic search and allows the use of the two-bar scan pattern. Map is identical to the radar position for automatic search, except that it locks the radar into one-bar search. Air to ground. Beacon and TV modes are not relevant to air-to-air -air combat. The receiver gain has two stack knobs, coarse and fine. These are used to adjust the amplification of signals entering the receiver and are used to filter out unwanted returns such as ground clutter. The pulse switch changes the pulse repetition frequency of the radar using three positions, short, auto, and long. In auto, the radar itself controls when it switches between short and long. The scan switch changes the number of bars the radar uses in its search. One bar scans 6.7 degrees of vertical angle, and two bar scans 10.45 degrees. Keep in mind that you can only apply a two bar scan in radar mode. To the right of the power control knob is the radar range knob. This knob changes the distance displayed by the screen from 5 nautical miles to 200 nautical miles. Ranges from 5 to 50 nautical miles allow for the automatic tracking of a radar contact, commonly referred to as a single target track, and values 100 miles and 200 miles are available for a more hands-on tracking method known as Spotlight. The Display Mode knob functions allow the screen to display B-scope and PPI in narrow and wide modes. Narrow is a 45 degree sweep and wide is a 120 degree sweep. VI, or visual identification, will display a best intercept profile for your pilot to fly to intercept a track target. The aspect switch serves two functions. The first is to provide a sparrow with an expected Doppler signal to look for when it's fired in boresight. The second, and more important to us with regards to radar operation, are its secondary functions. Each position of the switch changes what data is displayed in the upper right corner of the radar screen. The three most important ones are wide, nose, and tail. Wide will display closure in knots. Nose will display three digit altitude, and tail will display the target's course in degrees. The maneuver switch has two positions, low G and high G. Low G limits the acceleration of the radar and is good for tracking targets with low angular velocity and minimizes the effects of countermeasures. High G does not limit radar acceleration. Personally, I leave this switch in high G by default, as I have noticed very little difference in its effects. Finally, we need to be able to tell the difference between friend and foe. To do this, hold down the antenna hand control challenge button. Contacts, whether in automatic search or in single target track, display long horizontal bars above and below friendly contacts, while hostile or unknown contacts will display nothing but the radar return itself. Now that we've covered what we need to know in order to manipulate the radar, let's look at how we will take what we've learned and put it into practice. The barrier we will run into the most is ground clutter. Ground clutter is displayed as large patches of green blotching on the screen. The radar in the F4 does not have look down shoot down capability, and there are really only two things we can do to minimize the clutter. Lower the receiver gain, or change our aircraft's altitude. Once you have isolated the radar contact from the ground clutter and determined that it is not a friendly aircraft, you must now establish an automatic track. To do this, hold half action and move the cursor over the radar return and press full action to establish a track, as confirmed by the red T above and to the right of the radar screen. You will need to utilize the three aspect knob functions we learned about earlier in order to confirm that this is indeed the intended target. 
Your pilot should already have the appropriate weapon selected and prepped. In preparation for firing a sparrow, you will see new iconography appear on the radar screen. There is now a circle in the middle with a moving dot, as well as two bars in line with your lock contact. The circle is the allowable steering error, representing the maximum angle the missile would be able to pull when launched and still hit the target. When the pilot steers the dot to the center of the circle, the missile will need to pull a minimum of maneuvers on launch to intercept the target. The top line represents the range a hit can be expected if the target continues on their current course and speed, and the bottom line represents the range a hit can be expected if the target pulls a 180 degree high G turn. For best results, fire when the target passes below the bottom line. After launch, the lines will disappear and a new line will begin moving upward toward the target from the bottom of the screen. This line is a visual representation of the estimated time to impact of the missile on the target. Target course and speed changes will of course skew the actual time of impact. It is important to remember that you cannot immediately launch a missile upon target lock. The time to wait depends on the Sparrow variant. The AIM-7E Sparrow requires a delay of 4 seconds before launch, and the AIM-7F and AIM-7M both require a 2 second delay. These delays are to give the system time to program the missile with the expected speed gate to look for on launch. That's it for now for radar functionality. If you need more clarification, be sure to dive into Heat Blur's online guide. Checklist out.